And we are live. Welcome, welcome, everybody, to Clear Vision Wednesday. I'm super excited. First Clear Vision Wednesday of 2023. I am Claudia Mühlenweg. I'm your host. I'm a natural vision improvement teacher and the creator of the Natural Clear Vision Method. And today we are talking about, let me find my window here. We are talking about, um, basically the, the topic is fear, to, to release fear, to see clearly, and that all rhymes with the new year. But often when we begin the new year, we have these visions, we have these dreams, we have maybe New Year's resolutions, we have all these plans, but sometimes we are afraid to plan big enough or have big enough visions because we are not trusting ourselves that we can actually pull this off or that we can do this. So we play small. And I have a super special guest today, Trisha Kirby. Let me bring her on stage. Trisha, welcome, Trisha. Good to see you. You are so muted. So you have to unmute yourself. I am. Hi. Hi. So Trisha is also, you know, some of you might know her. She's been working with me. She's an amazing intuitive coach a healer. She is trained in so many modalities. I don't want to read your whole bio because that's also in the show notes. So welcome, welcome, Trisha. And I think you have prepared a little bit of a slideshow for us. Yes, I love it. And, and a happy new year, everybody. Welcome, welcome. So nice to see you guys. Uh, all right, so I'm going to bring my screen up. And that's going to be... Yeah, you should be able to share the screen. Yeah. And then let me go to... Yay, full screen. Okay, perfect. perfect, perfect. Okay, so the original Wednesday released fear to see clear in the new year. So, oh, where's my buttons here? There we go. So um, real quick about me, um, I'm a prof professional intuitive. I'm a transformational life coach, bioresonance practitioner and visionary artist. And I am here to help people live their best life ever. So what are we going to talk about today? This is a talk about overcoming fear. We're going to talk about what is fear, rational fear versus false fear, um, how fear affects our vision, how we reduce false fear uh, using psychology-based methods and a couple other methods I'm going to talk about, and then tips for vision and how this affects our eyes and how we can help our eyes see clearly by reducing the fear in our life. Okay, so what is fear? So noun, an unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous or likely to cause pain or a threat. And this is like actual, actual fear. So other, there's a lot of different names for fear. And the reason I mention this is because we always just think, okay, well, fear is fear. Well, no, there's a lot of different ways that we can call fear, fear. Alarm, panic, trepidation, dread, anxiety, worry, foreboding, doubt, suspicion. And then there's fear in disguise. And this is where fear comes in under other names that we maybe don't think of, of as being fear, like phobias, we have aversions, something called bugbear, bogies, nightmares, hangups, angst, apprehension, the willies, the heebie-jeebies, the shakes, the collywobbles, jitteriness, twitchiness, butterflies in the stomach. Those are all different ways that we can call fear, even though we don't really think of them as fear. You think, oh, it's just, I'm a little nervous. You know, but we don't think of it as being actual fear. So there was a book that came out a number of years ago, and Gavin DeBecker wrote it, and it was called The Gift of Fear. And I got it about 10 years ago when I was kind of questioning my own ability to be discerning about whether I was safe in situations or not. So and this was a book that was, when he was featured on Oprah many years ago, she said it was a book that every woman in the country should own and read, or at least read. And the idea is that rational fear keeps you safe. So what we're going to be talking about today in our talk isn't about rational fear, because rational fear, you don't want to remove, you don't want to reduce, you want rational fear there because it protects you. That's, it's meant to protect you. And he studied what the survival, what signals were that you were going to receive that would protect you from violence or danger, like actual danger. And he called it the messengers of intuition. They were nagging feelings, persistent thoughts, uh, dark humor, anxiety, suspicion, hunches, gut feelings, hesitation, apprehension. He said that there was intuition that people would have that would protect them because it was a foreboding and it was a real, a genuine fear. And it was a foreboding of actual possible danger. And he has lots of stories. By the way, this is kind of a hard book to read. I can't recommend it if you're like really a sensitive person. There's really good stories at the end on people who listened to their intuition and were protected versus the 
harder to read stories at the beginning on people who ignored the signs that he, he interviewed friends and actual people later and then bad things happened because they didn't listen. So then he talks about, he says that worry isn't fear. He said it's manufactured fear that's dreading an outcome. And he said it distracts you from finding solutions. He didn't find a lot useful in, in worrying. So the difference is, is true fear is an inner sense of immediate danger of pain or death. Like something bad is imminently possibly going to happen. Maybe you're going to get attacked by a wild animal or car something or whatever. False fear is the story that our mind and emotions may tell us, which may or may not be true. And often is just us kind of blowing things out of proportion in our mind. So we're going to be addressing today more of false fear than actual fear. So how does fear affect our vision? So we're here today learning about vision and fear and how to stay clear. So fear causes stress and then stress affects our eyesight. And this can be any number of things. I'm just gonna talk about a few of them, but know that any way that stress manifests in your life is gonna affect you differently than someone else relative to your vision. So one, one of these that's really common is is tunnel vision. People end up with tunnel. They end up with what's re called reduced a reduced peripheral field. And here's the thing. It doesn't look like this picture. This picture is an example of tunnel vision, but that's not what it's going to look like with your vision. So don't think, okay, well, I don't have that because I don't see that black ring around my vision. No, that's not what it is. It really is. It's a reduction that's completely imperceivable to you looking through your normal vision, but it can be measured by eye doctors who know how to measure peripheral vision. And this is something tunnel vision is experienced with anxiety. Uh, this is, it, it's in, so it's a narrowing of your visual field. So you really only see a focal point very clearly, but you really don't have a lot of peripheral awareness at all. I mean, it, it literally is, it's practically non-existent. And I know it because I had this after a car accident. So I had some trauma, my peripheral field narrowed and I lost color perception in the peripheral field as well as not being able to see. And it was just this tiny, tiny little circle that was left. So it's, it's the activation of the fight or flight mechanism when we feel actual fear. And then the brain blocks out information that it thinks is unimportant. Like it just wants you to focus on that one little area clearly, and then that's it. And, and, and that loss is the peripheral vision, peripheral field. So other symptoms of stress-related vision impairment, you could be sensitive to light, you could have eye twitching, if you've ever seen someone when they're nervous, maybe they have an eye twitch. You could have very dry or very wet eyes. You could have blurry vision, eye strain, floaters. And of course, these are all, these all could be other, there could be other things causing these as well, but that's some examples. So how do we reduce the feelings of this false fear, this manufactured fear, not the real fear? How do we reduce? Because you want real fear to be there. You want to know when you're actually in danger. False fear is something that doesn't really serve us particularly. So ideas for solutions. We're gonna go over some psychology-based methods and some other methods. So one is this idea of um, IFS, internal family systems model. This was a, this is a, is a PhD, Dr. Richard Schwartz, who, who writes about no bad parts, uh, healing trauma and restoring wholeness. And the idea is that there's all these different pieces of us and they're, like little sub characters. He said that we're born with these sub minds or these parts. And when the parts get a little out of hand, it's because they're not being included. It's a little, it's a, it kind of harkens back to the um, Margaret Paul's inner child work that she did. Like, oh, I think this is 20, 30 years ago now. He says that the parts are not imaginary or symbolic. He said they are individuals who exist as an internal family within us. And the key to health and happiness is to honor, understand, and love all of our parts. So this is part of it. Now, part of this comes about when we have adverse childhood experiences. So if you've had trauma or challenges, it could be anything from a divorce, a death in the family. Maybe your family moved. Maybe you changed schools. Maybe you were bullied. But oftentimes, these kinds of traumas result in sort of the, these sub minds within you that end up running the show in, in a not good way. They end up fearful, they end up frustrated, they end up anxious, and it's like a perceptual filter through which you view the world. Um, oh, so I'm gonna go back to this for a second. So this is about loving those parts of you. 
and he does sessions with people and you can get the book and you can read about internal family systems model. Um, he does sessions with people to help them integrate those parts of themselves so that there's this unified you now instead of all these little pieces there's the piece that's scared and the piece that's angry and the piece that's all these different it's not personalities but it's just like parts of yourself and and he has tremendous success with this method so uh thought field therapy and emotional freedom technique which is an offshoot of thought field therapy this is a way so roger callahan developed this as a way to use tapping so with your fingers tapping on meridian points around the body and they use it to help conquer and clear fear, anxiety, emotional distress, pain, all kinds of things, frustration. Um, it's, it's fantastic. There's just a little bit of a difference between um, thought field therapy and emotional freedom technique, emotional, this, these aren't my books, but I do have a bunch of these books. So EFT is, was developed by Gary Craig, who is a student under Roger Callahan, and it's made to be more home use, like anybody can do it, versus thought field therapy, which is more structured and right, um, it's contained, like it should be done by a practitioner. So an emotional freedom technique, again, you're just tapping along meridian lines. Your meridians are like channels of energy in the body, if you haven't heard of meridians. So you're tapping on the eyebrow, top of the head, side of the eye, under the eye, collarbone. Um, under the arm, there's a little karate chop point on the hand. So you're tapping on these points while you're tuned into the emotion and thought that you want to clear. And then usually you say some affirmations with it as well. Uh, and it works really well. I've used EFT for many, many years, and I absolutely love it. And then Lisa Rankin wrote a book called The Fear Cure, where she talks about cultivating courage and all the different ways that you can cultivate courage. And it's funny. Um, not knowing about this talk a number of years ago, I ran across this book actually at a library book sale and I bought it and I thought, oh, this is a really cool book. And it has all these neat exercises in on mindfulness and meditation and ways to cultivate courage within yourself from, from the get-go, like from, from the base of you. And then of course there's havening. So I'm actually a havening practitioner. I love havening. It's a psychosensory therapy. What happened was uh, there was a, one of the most famous hypnotherapists in the world is in England, and he went to see a psychic over there. And the psychic pulled a book off the shelf, and it was by Roger Callahan. He, she said, Hey, she goes, This book is for you. And he goes, Okay. And she said, No, no, you're going to work with this guy. And he didn't know who it was, never heard of it. So he started reading the book. And then, lo and behold, the next day he was traveling to New York and he met with a dear friend of his named Dr. Ronald Rudin. And, and they talked about this emotional freedom technique or touch field therapy at the time. And, they, and he, they decided to find out why this works. And they discovered how the amygdala works and how the body perceives danger and where trauma is encoded in the brain and how to, most of all, most important of all, how to release it. And that was using a technique that they developed, they being um, Paul McKenna and Ron, Dr. Ronald Rudin and his twin brother, also a doctor, Dr. Stephen Rudin, all developed this method called havening, which is about creating a safe haven. They use certain movements, face havening, palm havening, and arm havening to create almost like a hug of safety around you so that you feel safe in the world while in the presence of activating the past traumatic memory or the emotion that's causing you pain in this moment. So when they do that, it activates delta waves in the brain and it actually depotentiates the amygdala. It dissolves the connection between the memory and the emotion. Works really fast really easily. It's so gentle. It's just, it's absolutely perfect. Um, there's, I can't say enough good things about havening. So that's a wonderful therapy. And you can do that on your own too. You can look up self-havening videos on YouTube, or you can see a practitioner. So other ideas for solutions to fear and where fear comes up in our life. Uh, I like looking at five elements theory. So for those of you who are at my fall talk, where I talked about the late summer element in this one, we're talking about water element is the season of winter. And the primary emotion of the water element and winter season is fear. So the things that help balance water element also help ease fear. And this is meditation and mindfulness. So mindfulness is about being in the present moment. Often when we're in a fear state, we are worrying about something in the future or we're fretting about something in the past. But in any case, we are not in the present moment. So the more you can stay present in the moment, either in in your mind or in the activities that you're doing in your life, 
the better you are. And meditation is about clearing your mind. And again, it's, it's cases where fear is your mind driving you crazy. So meditation calms you down and, and puts you out of that state where you're in a fight or flight mode in your own brain. So some ways of healing that is reading a relaxing book, eating warm, nourishing soups and warm teas, taking a relaxing bath, and always doing things that you are feeling comfortable. But you'll notice the theme here is like flowing and relaxing and water, taking restorative naps, and being in bed before 11 p.m. And this is important, too, because triple warmer meridian uh, needs its sleep. And triple warmer meridian is your fight or governs your fight or flight response. So when you get to bed before 11 o'clock, you are giving healthy, needed, nourishing rest to your triple warmer meridian. And it's going to be able to support you better that way. Keeping a dream journal, uh, being kind to your own mind. So I work with a lot of psychology referred clients uh, among other clients. And very often they are not exactly kind to themselves in their mind. And I have to encourage them really, you've got to, you've got to begin reframing the way you see the world, the way you see yourself, the way you see your past. And it's about the way you talk to yourself in your mind. And then cultivating a sense of trust. This is a big one. So in the bioresonance sessions I do, and that's, that's more local, but I have, I had a, have a client actually that she came in and she had had a lot of betrayal in her family. And in recent things, there were people that she trusted she couldn't trust anymore. And what came up in bioresonance and in talking with her was that the water element was way out of balance. So she needed to do a lot of water activities. And this wasn't just one month. This was like several months worth of needing to do things to balance the water element, basically to cultivate a sense of trust in the world, to reduce fear that anything else bad might happen or anyone else might betray her, but keeping, keeping her back back on track again. And then eventually when that layer sort of peeled away and she had healed that water element, the layer underneath it in her case was, was wood element and anger. Anger actually came up needing to be healed, which made sense. That made sense. So, so bringing this back to vision practices, uh, focus on slowing down. So for vision, one example of this would be practicing the long swing. And this is, um, Bates talked about this in the Bates method. He talked about doing these long, slow swings where you're standing up and you're swinging back and forth. So side to side, very long, slow, and you're moving your head with your body, looking to the right, and then swinging back and looking to the left, but really slow, relaxed swings. And if you get bored doing this, then put some music on that's slow and has like a nice metronome beat to it, where it, it makes, it facilitates that nice, long, slow swings. So again, it's all about slowing down. The whole thing with water element in wintertime is that it's about restoration. It's about supporting you through the winter with quiet time and nourishment, the same way that you, you have a seed that's buried in the soil and is preparing to grow in the spring. It's not growing in the winter time. It's, it's you're nourishing yourself and keeping yourself secluded and contained and, and sort of growing in that nice, quiet way within. And that serves you to have the energy and the restoration to first forth in the springtime with great ideas and great action. So focus on slowing down. For vision, practice slow blinking. So if you've ever looked at a cat and looked at their eyes, you can do an I love you blink with a cat and it's where you blink super slow and they'll teach you how to do this because you'll just blink your eyes very, very slow and they will mirror you back eventually if they trust you and love you and they'll give you what's called an I love you blink back and they'll blink really slow and then they'll open their eyes up again really slow. So that's a great vision practice to do is practice this long, slow blink. And again, breathe with this, feel safe in the world, Feel that you can trust the world, trust yourself, trust the animals that are around you. It's all good. The universe has your back. And think in terms of water element turning into the creative flow, like pore painting art. If you've ever seen pore painting, it's where they mix a bunch of different colors together individually that have different weights to them. And then you pour them on a canvas and it makes these incredible cells and patterns and just these absolutely beautiful paintings. So flowing type art, not art that's really meticulous with rulers and designs, but art that's flow, like finger painting, things that where there's not really a pattern to it. And then you can tune into creative flow for vision and practice doodling like lazy eights. So there's a great brain gym activity and it's called lazy eights where you're making these 
infinity signs that are lying on their side and these nice, and you can do them big or slow or fast, however you want to do them, but just making these nice figure eights. You can even figure eight in the air with your arms. You just, you don't have to do it as a pen on paper. You can actually do it in the air in front of you and just make these beautiful figure eights. And this is, um, this is actually energy medicine technique too. You can actually figure eight directly between you and someone else create a figure eight, whether they are knowing about it or not. And it helps the energy flow better between you. So creating that little figure eight, and you can do it with your mind and your imagination as well. But that's a really, really nice way to have that flow. It balances the hemispheres of your brain because ideally when you're making the lazy eight, you're crossing back and forth of the midline of your body. So like your right hand would be crossing over to the left side and then crossing back over again. And you can do that in the air as well, but you'd be crossing over the midline and that's helping in brain gym, helps you think better, helps you be more grounded, helps you be more centered, helps you learn better. It's great for kids as well. And then practicing really deep relaxation. Now, this isn't always easy if you've got a super busy mind. You may have to practice this some. And then sometimes people need a little helping hand, like listening to a med guided meditation of some kind. Uh, or a visualization that help them keep their mind clear so they're not driving themselves crazy with their mind. So for vision, you would be palming with a quiet mind. And so if you have a hard time having a quiet mind, practice it, even just practice it for, okay, 30 seconds, I'm going to have a quiet mind, start small. And then use, use a meditation or an audio or video or something where you, you're palming and you're hearing something that's guiding your mind. So it, it has a direction to it where it's not just chat, chat, chat. If you can't quiet it, then do these methods first. And then Claudia's got a ton of, of little of wonderful podcast videos on here. There's meditations on here. There's um, other interviews with people talking about helping with the emotional side of your vision, there's tons of them. So I invite you to look at the channel and choose some of the videos that resonate with you. Um, there's, there's all kinds of different ones and it's definitely something for everyone. You'll probably end up getting distracted and watching something else too, in addition to the emotional ones because the techniques are awesome. Uh, and then me, so I'm, uh, I have a website that should be up later today. I just actually connected it and published it this week and it's very homemade. So, um, but I'm at trishakirby.com and my email is trishakirby11 at gmail.com and I'm on trishakirby11 at facebook.com and I, I do have clients and I always take new clients for sessions. I love helping people, especially this time of year, because it, it's, I think it's the best time of year to set intentions. You can set goals if you want to, but at least set intentions for your life. So look over your life and kind of have an overview, a larger perspective view to see what you would like to bring in in each area of your life. So like in career or finances or relationships, look at what you'd like to, to attract yourself, to manifest, to bring into being. And, and then I like to help people clarify that because I find quite often people are not aligned with what their soul has in mind for them, whether it's their jobs or their relationships, some things are either a little bit off or they're like a lot off, like they're completely in the wrong career. And, and usually it's, they, they, it's not like a complete mystery. Like they know what they would love to be doing, but they usually write it off and say, no, I can't do that. I couldn't, I couldn't afford to do that. It won't make enough money. And they, they write it off. And so they just bury it. And, and that's always really sad to me because I know that they would be happier if they at least incorporated parts of that dream into the weekends or hobbies or like a side, maybe a second job, but it's not even really a job, but it's like a life purpose. But I see that all the time. So I, I like to help people get back on track. And I, because I innately feel frequency, it's really easy for me to, to tune into the person's soul. I look at what they're looking at and then I direct them guide them through what their guides are telling me, like their angels and guides are telling me to help them head in the right direction. And it's, it's something I love doing. I was born this way. Uh, and I'm, I'm just using my gifts to help people live a happy, healthy life. That's, that's just my goal. So, and I am super glad you all joined us and I hope this is helping you reduce the fear in your life, increase the courage in your life and, and absolutely reach out to me, reach out to Claudia. We are here to help you. And that's it. Release oh. fear to see clear in the new year. Let me go out of stop share. Thank hey. you so much. That was super, super interesting. And first of all, we got some comments about the kittens. That was super cute. <laughs> the pictures. Um, and by the way, anybody, everybody listening. So Trisha and I did last January, 2022, we did something about life visioning and life purpose. 
So there is a huge connection, like you just said, Trisha, um, about how you, you know, how you live your life, how you see yourself, what you want to dream and accomplish. And, and then the fear and all the little pieces um, of your mind kind of holding you back. So, and I've also found, I don't know about you, Trisha, but I've also found that some people, and I've struggled with that too at times, are not really clear what they want. Yeah. So it's almost like, it's not even about the eyesight being clear, but it's almost like there's no clarity. What do I actually want? Do I really want to see this? You know, um, and I've, and my colleague, Nathan Oxenfeld, who was with um, me um, last last year, the last show last year, he had told me about a client who called it a blur blanket. So like, you know, it's almost like the blur is a cozy blanket because that kind of protects you, kind of keeps you in that safe space. So mm -hmm. I thought this was super, super interesting, Trisha. You really looked at all the different angles, the different methodologies. And um, yeah, I think this was great. And I'm looking at questions right now. I don't see any questions, but I see... Kathy said, procrastination is a way my fear shows up. Yeah, I'm guilty with that one too. <laughs> it is. There's actually, I have, it's so funny. I have a couple of two or three books I want to read on that, that literally I'm procrastinating reading the books. Um, but there is, there's always a secondary gain to procrastination. There's some way that you're benefiting or, or something that you're avoiding. So that's something to look at. It's still, it's one that I'm working on too. Actually, we should probably do a show on that at some point because, because part of procrastination is people not finishing the courses, you know, like they, they sign up and I'm guilty of this too. I'm guilty of like buying a course and, and either only opening one lesson or like opening no lessons and then, and not finishing it. And I want the results, but you really don't get the results unless you do the, you do the practices. Like you have, you have to. I want to share a little story about procrastination because there was a book written by a German guy. Um, I forgot his last, Sascha Lobo. Um, and he wrote a book on procrastination. I had moved back to Germany. I was still working as a designer, but I really didn't like, like, I, like you just said, I really didn't like the work anymore. I liked it for a long time, but I really, the stress of advertising was just not my thing. And I was researching vision because I had already worked on my own vision. I had already taken private lessons and I've already seen improvements. And so I was uh, always researching vision teacher trainings because I wanted to become a vision teacher. And, but at the same time, I thought I should look for another job in, in advertising because after all, a single mom, two kids to support, yeah. have to make money, right? So and all day long. And then I read that book and it said something, if you find yourself doing something that you, where you think, you know, basically the gist of it, if your mind thinks like, this is not what I should be doing, I should be doing this other thing, but you find yourself doing something all day long, that's what you should be doing. I was like, ah, so that totally confirmed to me that I was on the right track because I kind of felt guilty, you know, researching the vision teacher trainings when I should be making money and looking for a new job in advertising. And that gave me total permission. So I love what you said, Trisha, about that, like, you know, really connect, maybe do it as a hobby or maybe start taking some steps, you know, and, and we never know the outcome anyway, right? It's, we never know like one of my daughters, when she was young, she's like, but how do I know? How do I know? I'm like, you don't know. You take one step and then you have a little better view and then you take another step. You never know what the outcome is. Like the idea that we have this total control, that we have this path laid out like the driveway. So, you know, it's like, that doesn't exist. So, um, yeah. Yeah. It's funny with the career thing. I, so I did, I worked at a corporate, I did clairvoyant readings at a corporate Christmas party a few weeks ago and about 80% of the employees that I read were in the wrong career. And, oh, wow. and you yeah, and I didn't expect a corporate retreat, like, oh guy, you guys, you should all quit these jobs. Yeah. I know I felt really bad. Well, I didn't say that, but I was like, but I, what I tried to do was reframe it. And I ended up doing readings for the owners of the company too. And I mentioned that to them. And I said, okay, I didn't tell your employees to quit. But what I told them to do was tap into the, um, the energy of what they wanted to be doing, which was all kinds of different careers, like completely unrelated to what they were doing. And this was, they, these people were making a lot of money doing the work they were doing. Um, but, but I said, tap into the emotion of what you like about that other career, and then see if you can cultivate mm -hmm. that emotion in your current job. And then I said, and also keep in mind that you're not going to be in this job forever because eventually your soul will find a way to, get you back on track again. And you really want to, you want to be the one putting yourself back on track because if you let your soul run that show, it's going to end up being a harder go. Like it'll end up being like, you, maybe you get in an accident or you get fired or it's much better, much better if you're in control of it than if it kind of happens to you. You don't want life happening to you. You want, you want to be the one 
doing the show. If you're the one making the choices, it, the outcome is a lot more positive and a lot easier on you. So that's really good to know. There's some comments in the chat guilty of not fin finishing courses, including the one with me. I get sidetracked. I think I, to me, and th this is a bigger topic, but I think to me, not finishing something is usually because either you literally have too much on your plate because there's this shiny object syndrome. I've definitely fallen for that where you feel like I just need this one more thing. Um, instead of focusing, I, one of my students in my very first time I ran Natural Clear Vision, that was in 2018, she only buys one course at a time and she finishes every course. And I know people that are very focused like that, you know, and uh, have the peripheral vision, but not get sidetracked. And I think it's a different personality also to like be more easily distracted. And I'm definitely one of those people. And for us, it's really important to get clear on why this is important to us. And then obviously the course design can also help, you know, some courses are just really boring and others are more interesting, but the gist of it is like, get really clear why you want to do something. And with vision and Trisha, you can probably attest to that too. We still have, you know, if you, as long as you have the crutches of glasses and there's no real urgency and there's no pain, like if the tooth hurts, right, you would, you would go to the doctor, but it's, it's easy to get sidetracked because you're like, oh, it's not a big deal. I just put the glass back on. So getting really clear on why this is so damn important for you to see well and to see clearly and connecting with that. And that could be connected to what you shared about, Trisha, that could be connected to your work or your job where, you know, I know somebody who wanted to be a pilot and he couldn't do it because of his vision. So he had a really strong motivation to get, you know, to improve his vision so he could be a pilot. But you know, so I think we shouldn't also shouldn't be too hard on ourselves and we should just have the grace to be like, hey, I got sidetracked, maybe, and then pick a date when it's really important for you to get back on track, you know, um, so yeah, that's, let's see what else is here, focusing, yes, um, how can I learn that art to be super, fo I think it's a personality thing, and you can probably learn structures, and Trisha, I don't know if you have anything to say about that, um, you can support yourself being more focused, you can do that with your environment, your setup, um, and also surround yourself with people that are supportive of your ideas and that can hold you accountable. Um, and sometimes that might be like, hey, you know, the friendly friend who is actually just also calling you out if you, you know, so, so yeah, anyway. Um, yeah, I, mean, I, I tend to think this is an aura color thing too. Like yellows are very shiny object syndrome because they, they get bored easily and they really need a lot of things to keep them stimulated and interested in, in life and in work and everything else. And as far as structures go, uh, when I added in the tan into my auric field, I got really good with Excel spreadsheets and I got better with working on marketing. And How things did you add tan? How did you yeah. add tan? Um, yeah. you know what? I didn't do it intentionally. It was quite unintentional. It was because I started doing the business work. So I started doing, I got the Excel spreadsheet, learned how to do that and learn how to do all these other things with marketing. And I added in by accident. And then when I saw my, um, or colors teacher who, who I got the practitioner training from, she's just retiring now. I literally saw her on her last day of work last year. It was a, a year ago this week. And she said, oh, you added tan to your aura. And I was like, what? <laughs> I didn't even know I had done it. And she said that she said, yeah, you did that for business, I'm sure. And she's like, I did it too when I was editing my book because I'm a blue or blue yellow aura and she's a blue yellow also. And she said, yeah, I added it in temporarily too. But that's a good way to, to focus yourself and to get back on track with things because tans are like, they're the engineers and the computer designers and the inventors and the people that make sort of the infrastructure of our world is a lot of tans. They're the accountants, the lawyers, they're, they're not all of them, but many of them is this nice tan energy because they're very stable. They're not super emotional. I think you don't see police officers crying. They're, they're tans. That's it's, it's a blue thing to cry. If you see someone crying a lot, it's probably a blue like me. Oh my God, Bobby Casalino is here. Hey, hey, Bobby, good to see you here. She's awesome. She's a wealthy with Bobby. She's a super awesome, uh, helps you create your style and make you look good. Um, I probably did this, did a really bad job. But anyway, I think uh, an important aspect is to get really clear on what you want. And sometimes that means for me to get really clear on what I don't want. So sometimes it's easier to know what you don't want and then slowly chisel your way, you know, get more clear on what you actually want. Yeah. Um, so for me, I think you, I did a session with you and I was like, I want to live at the water. I, was, I don't know if it's an ocean or a lake and you tuned in, you were like, ah, it's the ocean right now. You know, maybe later there's a lake. So this is my, my mission this year is I'm going to live at the beach 
somewhere. <laughs> and I still feel that for you. Like I get yeah, it right away. Like the guides come in, I get goosebumps and I'm like, yeah, I mean, that's still there for you. It's just a matter of like creating it. So yes. the possibility yes. is very strong. Let me put it that way. I always, I don't, yeah. there's no guarantees in life, but the possibility is super strong. So, and this is also it, something like as a visual person, I used to think that I have to have this exact picture in my head, like, you know, how it exactly looks like. And it, I don't think that's the case. You need to have a very strong emotion connected to that. That's what I have this really strong emotion. So um, we have, do we have more questions? Because I don't want to talk here that much. And let's look at Zoom if there's any questions on Zoom. Um, good idea to get clear. Exactly. I think, you know, we all work differently and we all, you know, support yourself with people that help you to, to fill in the gaps where you might not be so strong because we all have different strengths. And um, what else do I want to say? I think your presentation was really awesome. Everybody in the Clear Vision Club will get the slides. Um, otherwise, what else, Tisha? Anything else you want to add? I don't see any new questions. Uh, like, well, like you said, I really, I love the presentation we did last year in January. So if you guys are like interested in something for um, setting up your vision for the coming year, that's a really good one to watch. And it, it's, a, it's, I think it's building a powerful life vision. And I encourage everyone to do some form of a vision board, putting your dreams down on paper, writing them really helps. Having an accountability partner or group really helps. Declaring them, post them on your Facebook page really helps. Like the, this is this is something that you you want other people supporting you and and you want their energy added in providing it's like supportive you know like supportive energy I know I have the ability to manifest stuff really well so when I add in my intent and energy to other people's dreams it helps move them forward and it helps everyone be more successful so the book session with Trisha I've done it it really really helps she's awesome and Thank I you. think when I before we get a turn of the YouTube live. Um, the slowing down, I think is really important. And I'm definitely like, I'm like, go, 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 go. I'm, I'm that kind of personality and that's okay. We don't all like, I just talked to a client and yeah, I said, you're probably the same way. Sitting at the beach for three weeks sounds like the worst nightmare of a vacation. And she's like, absolutely. <laughs> so you're right. We like to move, but you can move like, and I love how you demonstrate it with a long swing, which is, you know, you're doing a swing. And you can do the head swing too, where you just move your head side to side. But I see people doing this like, you know, like this, and your eyes are just flattering around. They're not actually, you know, you're not actually working on those little saccadic eye movements. So you can move, you don't have to sit still, but um, slow it down. Going from the breath, slowing everything down, like in the blinking, I love the blinking with, I didn't know that your cats end up synchronizing with you. I've, I guess the cat that I had wasn't, maybe she wasn't trusting me um I also wasn't trusting her to be honest <laughs> <laughs> it was my daughter's cat and she ended up biting me a lot but that's a whole different story um so I love that like slowing things down like almost like doing a slow motion which is so cool to do on the phone right when we shoot videos I think that's a really really great tip it doesn't mean that we have to sit still but doing things a little slower is a really really and I'm pointing to myself too because I'm you know, but we all have different energies. So it's not like about changing who you are, just like getting that groundedness, getting that trust. Um, anything you want to add, Trisha, because I think you did such a great job in your presentation. Part of, thank you. Uh, part of the slowing down is about creating the space within your own mind for those intuitive hunches and gut feelings to come in. I, I, I am granted I was born with the abilities that I have, but I did practice and train. And part of my key is I get very quiet in my mind. I get silent in my mind and I go quickly within my mind and I do what's called deep listening. So when you make space in your mind by slowing down, that's when those intuitive guidances and intuitions can come through and your guides and angels can reach you directly. So yes, I mean, I'm here for people, but I also like to train people so that you get your own intuition because I really don't want people calling me, like texting me. I mean, I literally have had people like get on the phone, like texting me and say, oh, I need your opinion on this. And I'm like, okay, the reason I'm teaching you how to do it yourself is so that you don't always have to tap me for stuff. You know, like I don't mind a session off and on. That's totally fine. But, you know, I want, I want to empower people. It's important to empower people. So creating that space in your life, slowing down, especially in the winter time, nourishing yourself right now gets you ready to move forward forward in, and have a really great year. And that's what we want for everybody. We want everybody to have a great year, have clear vision, have clear goals, have a clear mission, and then, and set forth and achieve those.
Awesome. Awesome. And I fully agree. I'm all about empowering people to help themselves. I feel exactly the same way that you teach skills that you can use your life long. So I don't see any more questions. Naples, Florida. Okay. That was Bobby suggested Naples, Florida. You're, you're very close to that, right? Trisha? Yeah, that's you're... about three hours south of me. Yeah. I don't know if I like Florida, but anyway, that's a different discussion. That's not what this is about. So you <laughs> just really quickly. Thank you so much, Trisha. That was amazing. Um, this is going to stay on the YouTube. You can watch it. And also I put everything in the show notes, how you can connect with Trisha, how you can book sessions with her and work with her before she gets really, really expensive because she's that good. So really talk to her now. And um, I loved working with you and I, Trisha and I've been working together. So she's been really helping me get more clear on things and also being intuitive because this is probably my last word as somebody who had struggled with astigmatism, which is kind of that all over the place, having all these balls in the air and never trusting your own instinct. It's always like asking everybody, should I do this? Should I do that? Should I do that? Should I buy that car? Should I buy that car? And really quieting down and like connecting because deep down, I had a coach tell me one, you already know the answer. I'm like, no, I don't, I don't, I don't. She said, you know, you know the answer. And it's so true because when you ask a friend, have you ever done this? You ask a friend, should I do that one or that one? And they said that one, you're like, no, that's not, the, that's not what I wanted to hear because you already know what you want. Yeah. So sometimes we just get so, what you said up here yeah. and we need to kind of empty that brain bucket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, you guys. So thank you so much. Connect with Trisha. And then next week, there's no Clear Vision Wednesday. I'm traveling to New Orleans on that day. If all goes well, fingers crossed. Airlines have been canceling flights left and right. So hopefully I will be in New Orleans and um, so no Clear Vision Wednesday the next week. And then we have on the 18th and we have Dr. Sam Byrne on the 25th of January, which I'm excited about. So thank you, you two. We see you in two weeks. And now we will have a little discussion, just a little final roundup in our Clear